The following podcast contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Showdown Podcast with Corey and Vic. The debate on what movie is better, Corey's choice versus Vic's choice. They each plead their case and try to destroy the others. It's a combat of subjective opinion. I'm Brad Scott, your impartial judge, and as always, my say is final. Welcome to episode 28 of the Showdown Podcast. Today's episode is the Found Footage Feud, featuring from the Jeff Vibber Podcast, Jeff Vibber, our combatants, the challenger, Vic, the time traveler's wife, Miller, (laughs) and his movie, Project Almanac, and Corey... Carry on my wayward son, Miller, and his film, Chronicle. How's he get that and I get fucking the, the time traveler's wife? Because you're black, Vic. All right, <laughs> God let's get him started. Vic, you are up first. Tell us about Project Almanac. Project Almanac. Starts off, um, I was reluctant about this movie. I couldn't figure out what found footage movie I wanted to do. Um, and I was... Trying my hardest not to go with uh, with what we talked about doing um, the uh, the VHS movies. Project. Oh, okay. Because we had talked about it already, and I wanted to see those movies, and I actually did went and saw those movies, and like really enjoyed those movies, but I didn't want to like use that <laughs> since you guys both talked so highly about those movies the day the the podcast before. I didn't want to like taint the whole thing, so I wanted to go with something <laughs> new and different. <laughs> I went with something new and different. Um, I went with Project Almanac. Yeah, and weren't you initially going to go with Project X? Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, I, I was, was going to tell you, that was a strike against you. Yeah. Right yeah. out the gate. I started I couldn't get I, through 10 minutes of that movie, and it made, made me hate young people. I started watching that I movie. Old. I felt how like people older than me would have felt watching Days to Confuse back in the I day. started watching that movie, and I was like, oh, it's McLovin if he, had, if he actually had some idea of what to do with his evening. And I turned it off, and that's why I was like, I need to do a different movie. This ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, thought that was, I thought it was just an okay movie, but I was like, if you pick that, I'm crushing it. <laughs> so, so Project Almanac um, starts off with the, uh, the main characters, uh, a kid that's trying to make it into MIT. He's a super smart kid, doesn't have a lot of money. Him and his buddies get together and create a hand gesture controlled drone system, um, which obviously is something that MIT would definitely be interested in because of our technology today. Drones are the big thing. Um, and spends his days trying to, uh, trying to get into college and finally does get into MIT but finds out he can't actually afford to do it. They're only going to give him $5,000 to go to MIT, which I was like, that's fucked up. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious because he, he made something that, you know... It, it was legit, and yeah. it was like, damn, that's like, good. That's new technology. Like, this kid is, like, yeah. GoPro millionaire easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come on. We, we'll accept you, but we're only giving you five grand. Yeah, it's five grand. Oh, that's, a, that's a big middle <laughs> figure. But Change the competition. He should have actually applied Kevin more than Kevin Spacey used to teach at that school. Kevin Spacey. Yeah, that. and he ran a uh, blackjack. So, uh... He tries to figure out a way to come up with the money to do it. His mom decides she's just going to sell the house. They're going to get the hell out of town, Dodge. We're going to sell the house, sell the car, sell your sister, and uh, we're going to get you an MIT. Sell your sister. Hopefully, it didn't actually happen. But Sex trafficking is a real problem. I mean, that's, that's a quick way to make some money. I, look, look, look at the Wayne Foundation. Trust me. I, I found it hard to believe she, just within a day, was like, I'm putting the house on the market so you can go. I was like, that's a big leap. It's like, well, I'll go stay with It's you. not like he was leaving for school the next day, dude. Never he still known. hadn't even graduated yet. She told yet. him the next day. She's like, I'm putting the house on the market. Yeah. You've never known what it's like to, to love a child. <laughs> you're going well, to tell, tell me that if, if your kid didn't need it, you wouldn't be like, we're selling the house. we got to go. Go to a state school. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to that free community college Obama's you know, giving away. Just for a couple months, and then you can transfer to MIT, because that works all the time. Yeah. But uh, she puts the house up for sale and says, we'll sell the house. It's an old house. It's worth a lot of money, um, and we'll get the money to send you to MIT, because that's what a real good parent would do, Corey. That's what they would do. We'll be homeless, so, so you can go to MIT. She didn't say she was going to be homeless. She just said she was going to get them in a school. She wasn't going to have a home. Uh, she's she's going to live with somebody else. Yeah, right. Therefore, so she what? doesn't own a home. What's wrong with that? 
Are you too, you're too much of a man to give up something, to give up your house, to live with, with family so your daughter can have better, have a better life? No, she needs to get out there and get a job. J O B. Yeah, we'll see how that works out in a couple years for you. Um, yep. So he comes up with the idea of, of trying to figure out another way to finance going to college other than them having to lose house. So he decides to look for a new idea to try to get some more scholarships to get more money to go to MIT. Because MIT is obviously robbing all of these kids of their ideas because they keep submitting them. They keep giving them these five dollar grants, five hundred five thousand dollar grants, and they're like, "Try Ooh, again." That, what if it is like a? Like a <laughs> you see what I'm saying? MIT's like, hey, "Hey, no, sip this all your yeah. shit. Make sure you walk us through step by step how to do it." And uh, five or six years yeah, down the line, MIT gonna is going to put all that stuff you. out in the public. Of course, we're going to accept you. Here's twenty bucks, like five thousand dollars that should keep their mouth shut for a while. Sam Goody. <laughs> <laughs> I think there might still be one somewhere. But uh, so he's searching around looking for um, an idea, and he, he aptly decides to take MIT's route and tries to steal his dad's idea, who's an accomplished scientist. So he's looking for ideas and things to do to, to try to make some more money and to get the college. Um, while doing so, they find a video camera that belonged to her father, uh, their father. He goes, oh, it's still working. He turns it on, and he sees a video of his 10th birthday party, which, in, which is also when his father... Seventh. Dis, was it? Seventh. Yeah. Correct. I, I Seventh birthday party, and which is when his father disappeared mm -hmm. and died leaving from his party. Um, he notices in the film that he is actually in the video, which is not so odd until you realize when he notices it's him, it's actually him now in the past in the video. He flips out, tells his friends. His friends are all like, oh, it's bull. He's showing them, repeating it, showing them, rewind, rewind. They finally realize that, yeah, this is him, which means we've figured out how to time travel. So he starts looking for the way to time travel. Um, figures out that why he's in that photo is because there's a secret switch in the light that lets him into a lockbox in the basement. He opens it up, and all the information on how to build the basic idea of a time machine is in there. I had an issue when he actually did go back in the past at the end of the movie. You're going all the way to the end of the movie. Shut up. No, 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 no. It's still part of the f current thing. He's going back in time. Yeah. They they made a big made a big deal about the shirt that he was wearing. They're like, oh, there's that blue spot because they when they ended up figuring out how he got that stain. When he did go back at the end of the movie. That, st that spot went there. I'm calling shenanigans. Uh, what, so you want to go this route? I, Keep every, that in mind. Every time I like like. This movie, I do this too. Like, anytime I'm in someone's house, I'll just start going up to random books and, like, just pulling them. <laughs> See if there's any secret, flipping switches. Secret, yeah. secret any matches? statue head, I try to, like, lift it up. <laughs> I do that when I'm in a castle. Hope That's that the door <laughs> slides open and there's a bat <laughs> pole. <laughs> yeah, that was the joke, Vic. <laughs> Thanks for explaining it. What's your point? <laughs> So, between you and Corey, I don't know who doesn't know how to sit on a joke more. You we tried to play in a joke on the end, and you walk right My contributions to the show. <laughs> Follow the contributions. Hey, right, Casper. I haven't done that since, like, episode five. That's a lie. Anyway, so, he moves on. <laughs> Moving on, they decided they're going to build this. They're going to take his dad's ideas and build this time machine. So, they start gathering parts. They figure out what it is. Um, they figure out that his dad's actually using low tech in order to hide what it is that he's doing. So they, they, they take apart their Xbox, a couple TVs, a couple old monitors, and they build this thing to figure out exactly what it does. And since these, this group of three kids are super smart, um, they figure out how to build a time machine. But they can only go back like 12 seconds in time. So they put a GoPro on a, a Barbie Corvette, and they decide they're going to send this thing back in time. They send it back in time. It causes a bunch of craziness, and they lose it. They don't know what happened to it. It pops up in the wall, half out of the wall, and has been sitting there watching them the entire time they've been working on this because they obviously succeeded mm -hmm. and sent the thing back in time. They just didn't realize that they had done it, and it repeats itself, so it's kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> they move forward and figure out, okay, well, if we can do this, maybe we can figure out how to go further back in time because at this point now they're thinking if we can go back in time, we can make slope. more money. That time travel, it's yeah, a slippery it definitely slope. Is. But, it's, can... but it's what everyone thinks. Hold on, if we can go back in time, what would you do? Kill Hitler. That was mentioned. And it was yeah. the first thing they talked about. It had to be done. Yeah. But then what would be the second thing you'd do? Think Fuck your it. mom. What? Right? Oh. <laughs> too soon, too soon. <laughs> they did bring up the fact someone's mom was hot. But um, <laughs> they figure out we need to go back in time and we need to uh, win the lottery. Because that's the quick way to get money. So, oh, yeah. 
They track yeah. back. They figure yeah. out the day after. They <laughs> they go in. They win the lottery. The idiot kid that that took the numbers wrote down the lottery numbers wrong, so they only made a hundred thousand dollars. So they had to go back and do it again. So they travel back in time the day before and they do it again and they get multi like hundred million dollars. They split it amongst each other. This kid's insured to go to MIT. It's great. And suddenly, uh, all hell breaks loose because now they figured out. Hold on, if we can go back a day in time, maybe we should go even further back in time. Although, to me, honestly, I would be like. Time travel's done. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't need to go back. Well, am I going to go back to before I had millions? Yeah. What the fuck am I going back for? I would have destroyed everything about it. And i uh, been like, you know what? I don't need to really try to find my pops. It's really short. He's fucking day. dead. You know, yeah. I'm going to get over it. I got all this money. The money will fill the hole. Yeah. <laughs> and then whatever the money holes can't be filled, bitches will yeah. be there. I'm well, you'll be filling their holes. Yeah. <laughs> With and that's money. exactly, what one, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what one of them does because he goes out on a spending spree, buys himself a hot sports car. Yeah, I like how don't they kind of act like they're the mafia? They're like, dude, you can't be. He's a fucking lottery winner. Yeah. You didn't scam the lottery. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're not going to be like, oh, wait, did these kids travel back through time? <laughs> yeah. But I, I will call shenanigans when uh, they win the lottery. They're only 17. They even said the it. The one kid is actually 18. Which the one? kid that went in and bought the ticket was 18. That's why he was out there about the ticket. But um, then how come the all Asian of them kid, got paid? The Asian kid, because he broke them off a piece of the winnings because it was all their deal. Cause, right. Yeah, because the one dude would have been like, okay, if you don't, well, I'll just go back I mean, another yeah, day when they're holding up the big kill Because the Asian, kid, the Asian kid was the 18-year-old, so he won the tech. Then when he cashed it and cashed it out, he gave them all money. The whole point was to get him in no, the I, I know, I know that he was giving them all money. But when they so when they were holding question? the when they were holding that gigantic this, check, this, it's this, the is, this is your issue because this they're is seventeen, issue of they can't do it. Yeah. No, no, this is the issue of believability you have is the the technical age lottery rules yeah. over the time traveling hey, kids. That I find whatever time. little bit, bits I can. One time I was on a casino on a boat, and you had to be eighteen to gamble. And this little Asian guy came out to me and goes, "Uh, are you eighteen? Can you be in here?" And I just go. Here's my winnings. I want 90 bucks. <laughs> That's the exact same story. All in, all in. So uh, being teenagers, as all teenagers will, the main emphasis of this thing is to party and have fun. So that's what they start doing. Now that they've got their, their future are insured. They have that money. That was like a, when they go to Lollapalooza. Yeah. Like that was a cool scene. But, but how did they I was, get there? What do you mean? How did they get to Lollapalooza? They time traveled back and then they I know. went. They I know. Drive. Remember they, they, no, no, no. Remember? They bought the backstage passes and all the advanced ticket stuff in the present. Right. Like when the, after the okay. show because people were selling them for like a penny because it was just like the right. kind of stuff. And then they went back in time. Yeah, with but those did they, they say physically how did they get there? Yeah. They took a fucking bus. Who cares? They went to all the they, they, they have money. Yeah. They have money. They can get on a plane and fly like there. They could, they could charter a G2 and fucking meet Bieber there if they it, wanted to. It, it, it looked they don't to call like it the just, airport. They call it the Clareport. All right? It looked like that they just showed up there. Well, like they went away, like they they were underneath the bleachers, and then they were boom right there. So you're gonna tell me that you've never well, seen? Dude, it would have been boring. It would have been a boring part of the movie to watch right, them go uh, through Sarah, customs. can you can you take your phone out? Can you take your, your your laptop out of your bag, please? We need to check that. Obviously, they didn't do that. They 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 drove there. <laughs> they weren't gonna get the time machine. Well, no, it's not wasn't, airport. wasn't it in like? It was in another country, wasn't it? No, no, was it? usually it's in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, Chicago. Yeah. Oh, then yeah. And they lived Wait, in Atlanta. They lived in it. How do you know they lived in it? Because um, there was at the towards the end of the movie when the cops show up, they say Atlanta PD. Well, yeah, they live in Atlanta. There's an airport. The whole place is an airport, so they can just get in and go. Not to mention, you can drive. You can drive. To, you can drive from Chicago to to to. to see, uh, I think it would have been Atlanta interesting to see a road trip. It'd be about eleven hours. Yeah. You know who else is going to be there? I got to pee. I'm hungry. <laughs> Hustle Can we gang speed this up? Gotta be there. <laughs> Hustle gang. It's Atlanta. Making, so they go. This is, this is where the, the big problem ends up is that you they, they came up with the rules of what they were going to do. They weren't going to travel alone. They weren't going to break these rules. Isn't it kind of weird that they almost played the entire song Radioactive? Like, that was a, it got, it's it got to be weird. a little point in the movie theater where you're like, all right, come on, guys. We've been we're watching a concert now. It, for, is, it, yeah, was, it was an MTV movie, so they uh, had to promote was their it really? artists. Yes, yeah. they had to promote their artists. So, <laughs> and that was the, that was the song at the time, so they had to push it. Yeah. Um, so they go about it. Um, they go to Lollapalooza. They had the time of their lives. A bunch of teenagers with all access passes to everything. 
you have you rock that out in a heartbeat. Lord of the Monsters. I like movie. how they were on stage with them, and the singer was like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" <laughs> like, they like the fastest. Yeah, dude. dude. He he thought this out. This wasn't like some kid that was just like, "I'm just gonna run around and do stuff." It's like, have but you know what ended up being his downfall? His, his Pussy. love for a chick. Pussy. Every time. So he figures will get out. You every time. So he figures out that uh, as through the course of going along with Palooza, he's he's finally trying to make some moves on the girl. He finally starts to actually get a little smooth. He's always tripping over himself, and then he fucks up. He says the wrong thing. She just walks off. He figures out that's where he fucked up. So he goes home, contemplates the, his fuck up, and decides. Well, I thought I'm gonna that was go a back. bit dramatic on her part too. He says one little thing, and she's pissed off for the next well, two she, days. Like, she, yeah, that's a, she that's threw it out there. Yeah. <laughs> she threw it out there. She's like, hey, I love you. And he's like, thanks. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get smacked in the that. face. Go ahead. <laughs> next time your wife I've says, hey, Corey, I really love you. Just go, hey, I want to go skydiving <laughs> and see what happens to you. Yeah. So he figures out, you know, I, I finally figure out where I fucked up. He's going to go back. It's not going to be a big deal. I'll just go back by myself. We won't tell anybody. It's, it's hoes over bros at this point. I'm going to get me a piece. He goes back. He comes back in time. They figure out that it's a very short span of time. Yeah, the time he, they left, he the time really they wasn't back. that much smoother when he went back. No, <laughs> he really wasn't. Like, he really wasn't. He caught but, a frisbee without looking. Dude, you, but when he got back, you, when he got back, there was ass and it was naked and it was in his room. Yeah, so, how did she not notice? Now, like, wouldn't she have gone, wait, we've been traveling through time. They went to, All of a sudden, this motherfucker's just snatching sh- frisbees sh- out of the air. <laughs> like, I would have been like, oh, hey, guess you've done this before, haven't you? Yeah, see, if he just showed it, see, this is the problem I had with some of the stuff towards the end. Um, he shows up, and she's in the shower, so she knows that he's been there, but he hasn't been there. Where did his other version of himself go? This happened on a few different occasions. Where Oh, like where they go back? Yeah, like when they go back. Because they see each other, yeah, because the one dude draws... Something yeah, on his own face. Yeah. So there's still another version of them there. But when he goes back and finds out she's in the shower, where's his other version of himself? And who did she have sex with? Because <laughs> she said that... Makes us have sex. Yeah. This is true. So where did, it, where did the other version of him it's go? Called, <laughs> he got the fuck out of there. <laughs> it's called... <laughs> that was the smart He was like, I don't know how I just did this, but he, he was calling his Uber. friends. He was in an Uber. <laughs> he was calling his friends. He's like, I'm going to let that other motherfucker from the future deal with all this shit. Yeah, <laughs> I busted that's my only, nut. That's not the only time it happens. I think that's probably the first time where it started to happen. Like, yeah, it would have been like six or seven of them at some point. Yeah. They, they overlap, but he was, he was moving back and forth across time, for one, to try to beat himself to the punch. So, like, when he went back, they should have been there, but he, he got there first, and they did the walk around. So he could have. I mean, it's just you have to you have to allow them to disbelief at some point. Nope. You have to either. I've watched you have to either, time it either needs to start in the beginning. Or the end. And okay, so you're talking about they go back in time, and there's there is or isn't supposed to be somebody there. But when you travel back in time, obviously there's going to be a shift somewhere. So it depends on where he went back. When they went back period. in time, when they were at the school, they saw their old versions of themselves. So there's there is another version of them there. Yeah. There but, and, and what did they do when they did that? They just walked in the other hit. direction. I know. Exactly. Where did his other version go? You, he went down to take a piss. After you fuck, you go to the bathroom. Wasn't he in the bathroom with her? No, because she was taking a shower. He went downstairs. That's a toilet in there. You, yeah, just don't he, flush. It's the first time he's ever had sex. You really think he's sort of secure enough to have to like go take a shit in front of her? Well, didn't have to take a shit. Man. You don't know. You wrote the uh, movie. You don't know. All right, back to your corner. <laughs> <laughs> this subject has gone on way too long. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're so you're both in danger of putting the audience. In. <laughs> anyway, the main thing is is he breaks the rules, and by breaking the rules, it sets off a chain of events that screws up everybody's life. People start disappearing, money goes away, everything starts to just screw up. And then the big screw up happens when he finally does explain to her what's going on because she figures out that he's basically flipping back through time in order to get what he wants out of her. She sees it as like the, ma- the major betrayal that any woman would see it as and says, okay, I hate you now. And that's right when one of her other selves from a different time frame walks up. Mm-hmm. She sees herself, it causes a temporal loop, they both disappear. He's screwed. He figures out, okay, I got to go back and try to save her, figure out where she went, and get her back. I know where I fucked up, which is kind of funny when he's trying to figure out the timeline. Like, he's, he's like, okay, maybe he's this, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. But, hey, he figured it out. He knew what he did. So he goes back. And in the end, he ends up getting arrested because they figure they're like, you you did something with her. What would you do with her? And which I'm, I'm, I think it's funny, though, that they automatically just assumed it was him. 
Yeah, I know. They always they, accuse the boyfriend, but she hadn't been gone for hardly any time. Because of the time travel, she was only probably gone for like less than a day. Well, it depends. Well, if, 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 it depends. if it's a time thing again, we're not going to go into that stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna give me. You're gonna give me yelled at by the ref again. Uh, <laughs> we can have this conversation later. But uh, they chase him down, and they they, they want to know what happened to her because she disappeared. He figures out that I have to go back one more time and just stop this whole thing from ever happening in order to fix everything. So he jumps back. He meets his father, which was his main goal in, in the first place. Is he wanted to see his dad. He wanted to get to college. He meets his dad. He tells his dad, "You have to go and die." So he's okay with it now. He fucking takes the thing and destroys it, and things go back. See, what he could have done, he could have pulled a Marty McFly and left him, left his dad a letter not to... Uh, oh, now you're into the time travel thing. Right. That wouldn't have done anything? Honestly, like, because then, yeah, after that, like, this this was, honestly, I thought this was the most annoying part of the movie. He, he does all this to prevent everything, right? But then he gets right back to school. He sees that pussy again, and he walks up, and he's like, we're about to change the world. And it's like, dude, come on. <laughs> but he's You taking, know how this ends. But he's taking her advice, which she gave him through the course of the movie, was how do you know I didn't like you in the first place? Don't try so fucking hard. Walk up and talk but, to me. But that's, that's what he was talking about. But this about. one at the he end of the He wasn't talking about walking up and talking to her about time travel again. Because he knows. No. Because that's the only shit he's got. No. I don't, I don't think that's what it was. He's, he's like me when I used to try to hit on girls. He's I always bring up that I'm a video. comedian, no matter what. How many times I would tell myself, he I'm not even going to be that guy. But then you get to a point where you're like, fuck it, this is all I got. <laughs> this is the only bullet in my chamber. I hey, but hey, what you learn, you learn and you get better, right? And, so and maybe she, she, could, she could get off her high horse. Of course, she's going to go back and be like, well, how do you know I didn't like you already? Just because I'm with you after you help me win the lottery and go yeah. to Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, that was, kind of, that was kind of bullshit because... She had no interest in him to begin with. That's not true. Oh yeah, no. That attitude. Then why had they never That's talked until the last, the last few days of high school? Why had they never talked? He said it in the first place. They said every time he walks up to any girl, he trips over himself and ends up embarrassing. No, himself. but so it's her attitude. Talk. Her attitude. She didn't have. Yeah, she attitude. could have. Maybe she could have thought that was charming and approached him, seeing how you know. Yeah. She, yeah, that's what they do. She's one of those girls. Yeah, yeah that's what they. Regularly I thought do. the sister was a bit creepy. Can I say that? I <laughs> I don't because, remember. like when when they were at Lollapalooza, and he her brother was walking with the girl, and they're talking, she's just sitting there watching him with the camera. Just the camera's just watching them the whole time. It's like, come on, are you an only child? No, I would not younger, do that. Do you have an older or younger? Sibling? Younger. Okay, you gonna tell me your younger siblings when you were younger wouldn't do anything to embarrass you for the fun of it? No. No, and this and that wasn't really being embarrassing. That was just sitting there being creeper. Yeah, because she's camera. always telling she's always telling him to put the moves on a girl. He's finally doing it. She, she was recording for prosperity. And I'll, t- and I'll tell you what, and to pick the on mic on the, on the mic on that camera was an excellent mic. <laughs> yeah, it was because <laughs> it was picking up from about fifty yards stuff. away and nothing and nothing around it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's solo out around. only their dialogue. <laughs> but every movie does that. So that's <laughs> Unless they're a good one. They, well, after they won their money, they went back, hired a boom mic operator to go through the rest there of it. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So my film... Are you... Is, oh, is that the end there? Go, <laughs> no, I, I didn't know... I didn't know if you're done. I figured I'd... Uh, Nothing else. I'll travel back in time and do it again. Yeah. So my film is Chronicle. It is about uh, three high school friends who, at while at a party, they discover what could be... They don't really think about it this way, but as a viewer, well, it could be some kind of alien artifact or whatever that uh, enables them to be able to uh, do a lot of uh, supernatural type things. They can, f- they eventually learn how to fly. They can move things with their mind. Uh, they can do uh, well. That's pretty much it, I think. But so, what it is that this? It starts out with Dane DeHaan, who some of you may know as. Uh, the Green Goblin from uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2, who was also in that Metallica uh, fake documentary thing, too. And he is an abused kid who decide, somehow he, he comes up and buys a, a camera, so he starts recording everything, which is where you get the found footage film uh, itself. He has His cousin is named Matt, and who is friends with... Uh, Future Human Torch, Michael Jordan. I will say this is directed by... uh, First of all, 
Yeah, his name is Michael B. He had to have the B in his name. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be confused there. Uh, this is directed by Josh Trank. I'm Trank. pretty sure Michael Jordan said, put that B in your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's directed by Josh Trank, who is doing the next Final F- uh, Fantastic Four movie, uh, which ironically Michael's in it. And uh, he's the he's, ironically, or probably maybe they have made yeah. a connection from this movie. Yeah, I know. Got well, I was using ironically, ironically, ironically. Oh, okay. yeah. and uh, and there's a whole nother hipster level. Iron, there. Iron <laughs> sake is not it was like drinking PBR friends. out of a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, they they get these superpowers, and they're trying they're they're trying to do new things. And as the more that they do it, their their power increases, and and actually to. You see Dane DeHaan's character, Andrew, you see, because of being bullied at home and at school as well, you see the makings of a, of a supervillain. Or, you know, he's got these powers and everybody's just getting to him and he's so pissed off that he starts to use the powers for evil. He ends, in the end, he ends up killing his dad, or attempting to kill his dad. By throwing him out of a uh, hospital window, and who? But his cousin saves him, so he doesn't actually kill him. And he just go from that point on to the rest of the movie. He's just uh, he's super villain. You know, he's flying. He's he's putting people in harm's way. He's throwing. He's picking up uh, buses with his mind, and he's throwing them at his cousin, trying to kill him. Michael B. Jordan, in the meantime, has already died because he. Dane DeHaan's character was up in the air. He was flying, and Michael was trying to talk him down. And he's like, he got hit by lightning and kills him. So, uh, so anyhow, it's basically the making. I, 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 I like to think this is the makings of uh, the, the Green Goblin, except. He died in this movie. <laughs> That's going really far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going really far. But uh, but I, I think uh, this this was really different. I thought the special effects were uh, something uh, you haven't seen in found footage films before. And I think because this was prior to uh, our previous movie, I think they kind of learned some things from it and kind of maybe I don't know if they uh, tweaked it to be more, to be better or they just went even a step further with them, but uh, I thought the special effects in this were amazing, and uh, to me, it's one of the, the best, one of the best where, found footage where films. Where in your mind did the special effects from Project Almanac cross with the, spec- the effects from this movie? Oh, a lot of the stuff, like when they were first starting uh, the time travel thing, when the, the, a lot of the stuff around was floating, I mean, that's, you got guys in, in Chronicle or floating. Uh, so you know they took it. They took it from that. <laughs> like I said. So the X Men movie took that from Chronicle, or they did, did Chronicle no, get I'm that talking from the X Men movie because there was stuff floating around in that too. No, because, and, uh, because there's this also is... like uh, let's see the Flash TV show right now. There's stuff floating around in that when he starts running. I mean, did that that's, come from this that's, too. That's, I mean, that's very true. There's but, some things floating around in my fishbowl at home. I'm pretty sure I got yeah. the idea. Did that yeah, come from right. Chronicle from also? Yeah, yeah that's that's exactly. Exactly. I got something yeah. in my bowl also for you no, too. No, but what I'm saying is, as far as found footage goes, you didn't normally see that uh, that those type of things in found footage films. Um, yeah, you did. Name one. Uh, Prior to Chronicle, any any of the uh, Super Eight is that is that, a found <laughs> that is a found footage movie? No, yes, it is. Not a found footage How is it not? How is that not a found footage movie? It's not fun. Okay, I guess there are parts. Yeah, <laughs> it qualifies. This qualifies for that. So does that. It's a bunch of kids with a video camera. That's why mine qualifies. Okay, <laughs> but that didn't, I don't think that came out before this, did it? Uh, yeah, that's it. I don't know. Let's Super see. Chronicle. I think Super 8 came out before Yeah, Chronicle. Super 8 definitely came out before Chronicle. Uh, the year before. So <laughs> the, Let it go. Yeah, just stop. Anyway, your shenanigans. i got to bring up your shenanigans. Oh, sure. Your shenanigans on my movie were that, oh, these things... Can, Come on. Really? There's a spot? There's several points in your movie where they're beating the crap out of people. Like, when they're throwing the balls at each other... Mm-hmm. When they first figure out they have telekinesis and they're mm-hmm. playing paintball and just like whipping balls at each other, yeah. yet they are stopping them from hitting each other. One of the kids gets whacked in the face with it, yeah. and it goes from this eye, and the next scene that bruises on this side. Is Come it, on, you're looking it was, in the mirror. No, it was not. It was a straight on shot, 
<laughs> and that's a bruise on the face as opposed to a blotch on a shirt. How about the blood on his shirt afterwards? Yep. After he got his nose, after they started, his nose started bleeding all over his shirt, the next scene, there's no blood in his shirt. You're going to call shenanigans. Be ready to have the shenanigans thrown back in your face. That's all I'm saying. I got more. That was me saying, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about Chicago to uh, Georgia from to Chicago? Yeah. Where's your movie filmed at? Seattle. South Africa. Where did they make it look like? What was it supposed to be? Seattle. That doesn't, that's not even the same thing. No. They but it does have time. to do with the fact that they start talking about geographic locations. Oh, let's go down Fifth Street and the, and the, the Sky Needle is supposed to be there. That's not correct. That's one. Let's talk about the cars. If you look at the cars in this movie, all of the freaking driving, all of the steering wheels are on the wrong side. Because it was filmed in a whole other country. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Well, the one Watch it again. When they're driving to school, he's on the left hand side. The car, yeah, his car. But all the cars in the movie... When they do the telekinesis push on the cars in the parking lot, all of the all of the steering wheels are on the opposite side. I don't know about that. I have Look at that. <laughs> it's there. So don't call shenanigans. That's my bit, buddy. Mine. I'll call shenanigans when I want to. I got loads of them for you. <laughs> all right, bring it. So I'm good. I'm not, gonna, right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waste your time too much. I just want to make sure that you understand that shenanigans don't throw them in my face. Commercial time. Uh, joining us today is our special guest judge, Jeff Vibbert, from the Jeff Vibbert Podcast. Jeff, where can they find it? They can find me at jeffvibbert.com, J-E-F-F-V-I-B-B-E-R-T. It's also on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and then Facebook, Instagram. MySpace. My, MySpace. Yes. You and me and my top eight friends. We're bringing it back. <laughs> yeah. We're bringing it back. Or top ten, whatever it was. Top eight. It was top it's eight. Top, it was top eight. I think they you were still, well, you, right? I'm sure he's probably You're celebrity. They gave you more. No, yeah, they gave you, yeah. Um, and yeah. you can't go watch him open up for Pat McAfee on July 11th and the 12th because it's sold out. It's sold out, but they may add more dates than another time, and you can always find him at Crackers, you generally. Can, I will be at Crackers June 25th through the 28th. There we the 27th. go. Some dates in there. We should have probably mentioned that on the first podcast. Yeah. Um, that is. Corey, where can they find you? Find me on Instagram and what else? Instagram, Twitter, and uh, I think that's it. Oh, Letterbox Steve at NKO Gonzo. Vic? You can find me on Marvel Champions. That's a new game I've been playing. You should check it out. It's actually worth the play. Um, at Black and Angry, BLAQ and Angry. That's right. I play all kinds of games. And you can find me on Twitter and uh, Instagram at MillerKing51. You can find me at IndieBradScott.com and at IndieBradScott on Twitter and Instagram and Comedian Brad Scott on Facebook. Also find the show, The Showdown Pod, uh, Twitter at The Showdown Pod and Facebook, The Showdown Podcast. Click like. Um, and with that, we will get back to the show with our results. Jeff. Thoughts, opinions, decisions. Well, two of my favorite things are superpowers and time travel. So, and <laughs> so this is another not a bad one. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, Sophie's choice all over again. I, uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna have to go with Vic on this one. Vic gets the uh, that. Uh, I'm gonna start by saying uh, that uh, the movies, the genre was found footage. And I believe you two went with two of the worst found footage movies <laughs> that the genre... You, these are two of the movies that make people say that it's a dying genre. Uh, I came up with this. This is just a list I thought of in about ten seconds off the top of my head of movies that would have been better selections. The Den, Houses of October Built, VHS, VHS 2, hell, even VHS Viral, Blair Witch Project, the original found footage movie, Sacrament, Last Exorcism, all were so much... Found footage is a horror genre. That's where the money is. Uh, so my decision... I didn't, first it, of all, I, before you say that, I didn't want to sit through Blair Witch again. So Clover, that's Cloverfield? Cloverfield? Cloverfield. That Excellent was, That was the other one, but we just talked about it. I didn't want to... I, like, I didn't want to skew it. I talked about it briefly on the Top 100. We had no, you and I talked about, about it we when I came back at length time. because you were explaining we're about some stuff about it. Oh, well, yeah, but we didn't do an episode on it. Yeah. Either way... Um, I decided you both lost. <laughs> so by default, yes. 
Vic has I win. one more vote, <laughs> and uh, and uh, he he wins by default. It's, but see, uh, but but shouldn't we both get negative one from you, and then he gets one, so he's back to zero. Which means uh, I would still one. leave you at negative one. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Any way you try it, brother. Any way you try yeah. it, it's all good. So uh, you win, you lose, you lose. But they do. Their staying found footage is a dying genre. I think it's great. I love those movies. I, I can watch any found footage. Yeah, of course, are they going to be cheesy? Yeah, but what horror movie isn't cheesy? I was tempted to take one of the Paranormal Activity movies, one of the first. That's just, yeah, I can't believe I forgot those. Uh, yeah. Which is another one that has no floating stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> but they came after this. They came after Chronicles. The first three Paranormal Activities were great. The fourth one was okay. Is that the Barrio th- one? Uh, I think that was That's five. Not the Barrio one, is it? Okay. Barrio. Yeah. The, yeah. Is the fourth one the one where there's like the neighbor next door and the boy comes over? Uh, yeah. The house yeah. is full of the girl, the blonde, the teenage girl, the yeah, the covenant. Yeah. The covenant. Yeah. The covenant. Yeah. Which yeah. is. The, the first one I thought was okay. The second one I liked better. The third one I thought was good too, but I liked the second one better. I thought the third was the best, to be honest. I like the first one in like all of this. Like whenever you have a found footage movie, the first one always seems to be the better one to me because it's, it's more original stuff. Then when they hit the second one, there's it's a, I think it's a better story. Like if the story is much better, much more well fleshed out. But then it's just kind of a repeat of what's going on for the first one to me. So I like the first one in those ones better than the second one. Just like with with the uh, the VHS movies, like I like the first one a lot. The See, I thought one, the second one was second better one than the was first. Good. The second, the second one, was good, one but it just it wasn't it wasn't surprising. The second one had a woman giving birth to a giant Satan with. <laughs> Huge ram horn. Oh, I've seen that. I oh, see that. VHS yeah. too is amazing. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh. far past my VHS is pretty like the concubine and the the first yeah. animal they pop in at the hotel. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, with the with awesome. the with the uh, the, the, chick. the bat. She was a bat. Yeah, concubine isn't crazy. the right word. Uh, it's a uh, no, no. It's a succubus. Uh, succubus. succubus. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Concubine's a, a whore. Okay. The, and then the, the second one. The zombie one. That's all I have to say. Oh, the fact, yeah, with the with the GoPro yeah. biker dude. It's yeah. a it's that a guy a who has a GoPro, right? Uh huh. And like uh, that's that's where you're getting the. He's food. not on oh, a this bike This is in VHS too. Two. Okay, yeah, I was like, one. I don't remember this. Okay. And uh, this, like, he he calls his wife, whatever, blah, blah blah, and then he hears something, and these zombies attack him. He becomes a zombie. And he's still wearing the GoPro. That's amazing. <laughs> so it's a GoPro of a, from a zombie's point of view, and it's so good. I had a lot of people. Sorry, I just kind of no, no, no. I had a lot of people tell me VHS is amazing, and like when I watched it, my expectations are really high, and I was like, it just kind of ended, and yeah. I was like, ah. Uh, uh, so maybe VHS two will be better, but the second VHS, one, it, it was it was decent, it was entertaining. The second one actually has like an eighty percent certified fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Do they have like a bet- critics like? Do they have a higher budget for the second one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, because oh, yeah. the first one was definitely. And I think yeah. they brought in more experienced directors, and then even viral was okay. Viral was okay. I haven't seen viral. It's. I mean, it's definitely like. It was weird. Third. It's definitely the bronze. Uh, the, the wraparound was weird. Yeah. With the truck. Uh, have you seen the ho- the houses October Bill? No. That's a really really good one about uh, people basically they're doing a documentary about haunted houses and they're trying to find the most extreme haunted house uh-huh. and then they find this one that says like. It's not even a haunted house you go to. It's these people that just find you and fuck with you. Yeah. And it's really good. And The Den. The Den is, I think, one of the best found footage movies of all time. And it has great social commentary at the end. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it. Uh, yeah. The Den. Do we care more about you? Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But The Den. Any, if you're out there, go to Netflix, The Den, <laughs> and watch it late at night by yourself. Oh, that gets during a rainstorm. There were times during that movie though that I felt like it's like um, I don't know you're because it was shot like through somebody's webcam. It's mm-hmm. like I shouldn't be watching this. Have you seen Unfriended? Uh, no, not Unfriended. I saw the uh, it's not I saw great. one called. It's uh, good. It's it follows. Really. Yeah, that was, what is it? It follows. Oh, What's I want to see that. That's where it's, like the girl has sex. Yeah, with the guy, and, and he like he like puts the the, the demon off yeah. onto her. It's crazy, dude. If there's. Uh, yeah, that's super AIDS. Yeah, <laughs> super AIDS. Follow you. <laughs> this thing turns into different things, and one of them is like this fucking eight foot tall guy that like, and, and it it changes like on the go. So like they're running from it, and it comes to the door, and we like everybody like my my daughter and I were watching, and my son, 
and this dude like walks through the door. He has to bend in half to walk underneath the door to come in. We stopped the movie and just started looking up who this motherfucker was. He's the biggest dude I've ever, like the tallest guy I've ever seen in my life. Was we, it Manute Bowl? No. Uh, George Muir. He has acting experience. Yeah. yeah. But I was I was amazed. Like that it was it was it was really good. Have you seen the Babadook? Yes. Have you seen that? I've, I've heard. Yeah. That I thought it was all right. Uh, it was everybody was everybody was like, things. "Oh, it's yeah. such a great movie." It was okay. It has a few creepy good parts, but I was uh, I was like, ah, I kind of want to call CPS and get this kid yeah. out of here. He's so fucking annoying. Yeah, I wanted I wanted the Baba Duke to take the little kid. Yeah, like and, and, and well, not even that. I'm like, she's a shitty parent. <laughs> like you're fucking. That's why your kid's a fucking nightmare. You're a fucking lazy bitch. Like get off what, your and ass what is and this be a creature? mom. Baba Duke. The Babadook. I got that. <laughs> what is it? Like he, he. That's what he is. He, you read this book, and apparently it's like it's like it's like it's the, the, it's it's like the, the movie ring. before the ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like the ring. The book form. <laughs> <laughs> like you read this book, it's, and he's it's, there. It's for it's for ghetto kids that don't. And he'll, TV. And he'll yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll you'll burn the book, and he'll send it back to you customized and you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh shit, that's I mean, like that's what Do, my daughter. You know would those do. old two-show adventure the, books? You can you can order them back in the day, and they put your name in it. Like he yeah. sends it back, and you're actually in it. You're like, oh, well, no, these are pop-up books. So, like, my daughter, even if my daughter saw a book that said, like, something about Harper and it had her getting her throat cut, she would still just be like, Daddy, I am in the book. book. Look, it says Harper. That's my name. Look, that little girl looks like me. Oh, look at that. My throat gets cut. My daughter's, my daughter's into horror movies. She's a little strange. Yeah, my kids are desensitized, like too. <laughs> but, uh, nah, I think the horror, the found footage horror genre is alive as ever. And uh, I think probably... You have to support it. But are we happy with that? Well, I think probably the scariest found footage thing I've ever seen uh, was Brent Terhune's special Mr. Turkey. It's horrifying. Will, will it be out by then? Is that... Oh, shit. We'll have to edit that out. Yeah, I forgot. All right. Yeah, when does it come out? And it's going to be a CD, too. Oh. Uh, I think it comes out in July or August. Check that out, by the way. If we right. don't edit yeah. this out, yeah. just check out Brent Terhune, Mister Turkey. It'll be on iTunes by the end of August. He's really, really funny. That was supposed to be more of just a quick joke, but nobody laughed. I mean, every yeah, it's not we, all it, well, we didn't know anything about it. You two were the only ones to do anything. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I was pretty inside. Yeah, yeah still, Brent Terhune, look him up. He's very funny. yeah, very, very, very yeah. <laughs> All right. with that. What a weird way to end an episode. <laughs> You're like, um, comedy awkwardness? Forget you know us. That? Check out this other guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're inconsequential. Yeah. Uh, follow the show, like the show, send us your feedback, um, and listen to the next four minutes of uh, smooth, easy jazz Or you music. could tell them who is actually listening to us. Oh, should we say should shout we do outs. some let's, tweet outs? Yeah, let's get some shout outs. Some tweet outs here. Uh, why does it? You know our Twitter handle is really long, so I bet people have tried to reach out to us before. <laughs> but there's some long ones out there. Uh, the small town girl po- uh, prod. Oh, productions! It's a production, independent film production company. Uh, genre movies. Uh, Truth or dare? Hey, big shout out to Ali Spagnolia. She's a drinking composer with a music problem. I like that. Uh, she invented the Shot Glass USB album and drinking game concert. She wants to be pals. Be pals with her. She's got 1.6 million followers, though. She's doing that's, something right. That's better than Shot Glass. But uh, you cast Van Horn. Um, she's a training coach, a mentor, and a people developer for whatever that mid was. Who cares? <laughs> um, the last great podcast. Follows us. The Last Great Podcast. At The Last Great Pod. Bold, bold handle. Not going to lie. Bold handle, bold name for a uh, podcast. Kind of insulting to anybody that came after him. The Last last Great Podcast was episode 28 of (laughs) The the Showdown. Showdown Goddamn right it was. Or episode 11 of the Jeff Vibbert Podcast. There you go. I think you were episode 14. I know I yelled episode 11. Son of a bitch. (laughs) Brad Scott was the episode. That's what we're all getting at, folks. Um, maybe we could get the, maybe we could get the Heat fans to follow us and this podcast could go places. Spock, actually, it's I at, follow never mind, guys. I thought Spock followed us, but it's actually at Dead Spock, um, which is a strange, uh, did you know there's an actual website, AbeVagoda.com, that just tells you whether Abe Vigoda is alive? Yes. Really? Yes. Tell us about it. <laughs> I think we've covered that one before. It's just a it's great website. website. Yeah, please check, check and see for, we got, I'm kind of curious. Should, I forget. Should, do we want to see if he's still alive? At Husky Tags, 
Husky Tags are an online store that sell authentic embossed U.S. military style dog tags worldwide. Shout out, you know, <laughs> in case one of us gets lost in this death of a podcast, we'll know. My parents had me chipped. I'm good. <laughs> they can wand you. <laughs> hey, if you like we video games, to. tech, gadgets, beers, and silly shit, then their podcast is for you. That's the Pox Caster at Pox Caster. Uh, Kadoja, official Twitter feed of the ongoing Giant Monster comic series, parentheses with the soundtrack, Kadoja. I really thought you said Vidoja, and I was like, yeah, oh, Vagina, huh? 93.9 The Beat. Indy's home for 100% throwbacks. Hey, yeah. look at that. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, we've, we've endorsed competition amongst... <laughs> I've never uh, listened. I don't know. Right at yet. Crackers Comedy, I'm out. Crackers Comedy follows the Showdown podcast. Uh, Dave Linquist, uh, he's a, a local. Uh, is he a sports guy? Uh, music, music. Oh, that's why I've never heard of him. Uh, Indie, Pop, Indie Popcorn follows us. You we talked about them on the last episode. And good thing, uh, uh, Dave Landau. Dave Landau. Big shout out to Dave Landau. TV's Dave Landau. We although we're starting to sound like we're starting to sound like, like his PR people. Or we're just like we're creepy. <laughs> yeah. We're really uh, KCBGH from uh, Bloody Good Horror at Jolly Molly. It's my girlfriend who doesn't even listen to the show. You're more than welcome to throw some of your listeners does, in if you she, want. Does she, does she <laughs> She's just going listen? through apparently. Oh, God. <laughs> Patrick would uh, follow people, but he always loses them. That's our good friend Patrick, the blind guy. <laughs> hey, Patrick. Hey, but we didn't have a Patrick do a call in. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I can't see you, but I'm here. So no, no, he can, he can he can use the phone. We just have to call him. He won't know who's who it is. <laughs> we could just call him and you know, like act like we're telemarketers. Pretend we're not there. <laughs> what is this? Is this? Uh... I was trying. I was going to try and do a, do a photo of all this. We'll do oh, it. Okay. I thought you were going to do that. I thought it was a Periscope. Periscope. Yeah. yeah. No. Check out Periscope. Check out Jeff Vibber on Periscope. Has this been four minutes? I won't spoil. It's been much more than four minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we want to say one more time, thank you for uh, for suffering through the last couple episodes with us, uh, Jeff. Uh, we really appreciate having you. Yeah, and you uh, me. Corey and Vic, uh, go fuck yourselves. We'll see <laughs> you guys next time. Hey, Chief Chief, What are you doing? Friends are racist. Everybody got a box with me. Oh, I forgot I was playing. <laughs> <laughs>